tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. And if you don't like something that you're dealing with in your life, what's the best mm -hmm. way to change your habit? Go backwards. Act as if you are changing. Say that you are changing and you will change your thought. And so mm -hmm. spell work is very much like that. We have intention. We have what we want to do through spoken word, through the vibration, and then we do it. We mm. bring in those energies, we cause a change, and the more one vibrates in harmony with authenticity, or with the help of familiar spirits, or the divine mind, source, the quicker those responses will happen, the whole cause and effect. The more mm. you are resonating, the more of these energies towards that goal you have, the quicker you're going to see results. For me, I've noticed as I've, as I've grown in my practice that I personally don't really do much spell work for myself. I've noticed that for me, all my work that I do with my, with my clients and stuff satisfies me deeper than doing spell work for myself. And in fact, it actually I've been talking with my counselor and some of my teachers and stuff. For me, spell work for myself really doesn't work. And I think that's my guides telling me to stay humble. And so through the law of attraction, by helping others, I'm bringing more help for myself. Yes, yes. So what I do, so what I do to cause change in my life I do petitions. I, I, I reach out to the spirits around me through offerings, through um, speaking good words with them, you know, getting to know them, exploring. Like behind my house, I got a beautiful birch tree who's, who's seen many years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I sit there and I leave little offerings of cake and honey and I talk with it, I touch it, I, I really meld myself with it, I spend time with it, I speak with it like I am with you right now. So I've always believed that there's a purpose for every human being. I, I can really feel it, um, that there's a calling. And can you please talk more about it? Because it's something that I share to friends and clients that, you know, I really believe that there's a purpose and there's a calling. And that the moment you decide to actually move towards the path of your calling or your purpose then all the other details get taken care of a lot faster and easier uh what what can you say about it reverend adam actually i i completely understand the concept of a calling um i was introduced to i was actually introduced to wicca before i was introduced to metaphysics or anything else um i remember I was seven years old, and there, there was this girl at school I liked, and, mm -hmm. and so she was the one that introduced me, not necessarily to Wicca per se, but to um, the concept of working on psychic ability. And mm -hmm. I've got a quote, actually, that um, kind of ties in what we were talking about, about metaphysics and witchcraft and being psychic and i want to draw on that first before i really explain the the whole calling thing and this is from a, uh, this is from matt Aaron from a recent book called psychic witch a medical mm -hmm. guide to meditation magic and manifestation and he says quote a psychic witch is one who not only perceives information with all their inner and outer senses in all realms of reality turned my back on my Christian upbringing and I fully embraced my psychic self of course at that time I didn't call myself psychic because I couldn't sit there and do what half the people in the movies could do or, you know. <laughs> but the thing is is it was Matt Aaron and reading his book and stuff that helped me to embrace that and so I always knew that I found joy and peace and spirituality I found. And I always knew that my job would be to use that, use the pain and suffering I went through growing up, which will be mentioned a lot in Witch Child, that I'm working on. 
I've been working on this for a while. I don't know when it'll be published or if it will actually get to be published. But um, being a survivor of the end part of the satanic panic, I knew that I needed to get this stuff out there because a lot of people were hurt. A lot of people would be hurt. And the whole concept of my study of all of this was to bring healing and to be the wounded healer, as many shamanic type traditions uh, reference, to to teach, to guide, and I thought for the longest time that it would be as an author, but I realized, mm -hmm. actually, I actually realized today that being an author is like third priority on the list. First priority is to get the message out there, doing what we are doing right now, to to focus my whole life on giving back to the community that honestly saved me. Honestly mm -hmm. saved me from so much pain and suffering. And the thing is, everyone has a calling. Some may discover it like I did at the age of seven. Some may discover it in their 50s. The thing is, is you are never early, you are never late. You will discover your calling when you are ready to receive it. And honestly, I became really ready to receive it about a few weeks ago. I had a client and she told me that things were going to change within the next, like, like immediately, that the things would start changing. I would have to be open to accept them. The next thing I know is you inbox me and say, hey, I've got a show. Let's do this. That was, that was the final aha. I am doing what I need to do. Yes, I'll work on my book. For that, Reverend Adam. And I'm very uh, grateful that you actually talked about a lot of the ways where uh, people can actually apply Vika. And one of the things that I want to emphasize here is um, the spells that you mentioned, which is actually uh just another term for saying that you're praying for something uh gathering the energies that are necessary to shine the light give the most benevolent outcome to whatever particular concern that we have because i want m more people to realize that actually we are more connected than we think that we are separated from each other and it's this illusion of separation that's causing a lot of problems in the world and Honestly, I've been so busy with clients and stuff and computer problems that it's actually been a while since I've been able to actually update my website. But on there, you'll find um, a blog where I like to add a little bit of information every now and again. It'll talk about the various services that I provide, such as energy healing, so like chakra balancing and um, aura cleansing. I also do rune readings, tarot readings. I use a lot of tools in my pastoral care. And of course, I also do various petitions and offerings to them in the unseen world. In the local area, I also do, as an ordained minister, I do perform hand fasting, hand partings, um, baby blessings, house cleansings, um, dealing with the spirits of your own land because sometimes negative um, vibrations can gather together and you'll have stories of like hauntings and stuff like that and this is where it's important like you your um, friend had mentioned and stuff about you know even working with entities that we may have harmed in some way or has harmed us in some way and that's about dealing with certain debts karmic debts as you mentioned and um, I can help with those processes um, my pastoral care also can come in the form of you know answering simple questions here and there and in fact um i also am currently working on a patreon account where people can, can sign up for my patreon five dollar tier level and stuff gives you access to articles and that and um various videos i i collect the ten dollar level gives you the same thing and a complimentary um tarot reading um for that month um I like to keep in contact with my clients and see how they develop by month by month. Um, and also, if you require more than, than um, one tarot reading a month or you want to give the reading to a friend, um, 
those in the $10 tier level and stuff automatically get 50% off on any ad additional um, um, services. Oh, I think we covered quite a bit. I know that we, there was a lot of other things we were going to get to and stuff, but I think that Spirit had something else in mind, and I think that this was one of the best interviews I have ever been a part of, and well, I would love to, to come back at some point, and we can go again. Yeah, of course. Mysteries. <laughs> yes, thank you for that, Reverend Adam. Of course, I'd love to have you again. Uh, on the show and I want to thank uh, our staff Ralph, Dean, yeah. Dax, Abby, uh, Jason, you know uh, this show is working very, very well because of you and our viewers as well thank you so much for the inspiration that you bring to us that's why we keep moving forward and at the same time I want to invite everyone to tune in again to Putting Things in Perspective on Tuesday I'm gonna have Steve and Simon again guest on the show because a lot of people actually want him back. And that's all for tonight. I'm going to take advantage of what Reverend Adam mentioned about, you know, looking more deeply into the quality of our interactions with each other as part of my practical magic tip for this week. And before we end, I want to thank Sir Rolly and Sir Charlie as well for, you know, being co-producers of this show. And now I just want to invite everyone to... Just tune in within and close your eyes. And together, let's affirm the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. So it is. And thanks again, Jezer Garcia, for our posters. That's all for tonight. Thanks, everyone. And remember... You are actually the magic that you've been waiting for. So get started and take action. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.